what's up everybody this is Ingram I'm one of the Minecrafters and today we are going to fix the problem that Tech at Light 061 created what is that problem Minium stones with the latest upgrade of Minium stones Minium stones will now actually the latest update of Tech it Minium stones will now be destroyed when used in a crafting table um, typically they would just kind of run out and it didn't matter but now, when that thing hits zero, the minimum stone will be destroyed, and so your factory will come to a grinding halt. So maybe you're wondering, who cares? What is a minimum stone good for? Anyway, that's an excellent question. And if you look here, there are actually 81 different recipes for the minimum stone that you can use to turn one thing into another. Pay attention to this one. Iron ingots into ender pearls. What? Um, another good one is gold into iron, which I can't find. And you can turn... Uh, all these different woods into different wood um, types. You can do wood into obsidian. You can change different color trees into other different colored trees if you're into that sort of thing. You can convert blaze powder back into a blaze rod if you're doing a maceration rig. Glowstone into four glowstone dust, which is the only way to get 100% output. Uh, basically, there's a lot of stuff. And this thing actually, despite what we may have thought at the beginning, turned out to be quite useful. So one of the big problems is minium stones only drop from hostile mobs. You can see a shard there. They don't actually drop the whole stone. They drop shards. They only drop from hostile mobs. And only if the player kills them. You cannot drop a mob. You cannot um, set up a mob grinder rig. You have to actually kill the mob yourself. Or do you? The other problem is the drop rate is not 100%. I just killed like 10 guys and only one dropped. So... That's going to be a problem because we're going to need to kill a lot of mobs. In order to get one, it took all those, and we need eight per minium stone. So let's set up how we're going to actually kill these mobs. Now, to do that, we're going to actually use modular power suits and specifically the power tool. The power tool can be made through this recipe here. It's actually not that bad, um, and it's an insanely powerful piece of armor. And then we're going to need HV capacitors, which are a little more difficult to make. They require this energy frame. So you got to use a magma crucible to pump, uh, to melt redstone and then connect it to a liquid transposer. Just stick them right near each other. Make sure the input and output are configured. Uh, make this energy frame. You're going to need a pulverizer to make hardened glass and an induction uh, smelter. Kind of involved. Um, you can figure that all out. It, it is actually not too bad. And then the solenoid um, is just wiring which is made by redstone and gold cable, and then a machine block, which is just refined iron. So once you have all those things, you're going to need six solenoid and two HV capacitors. You're going to go into your table, your tinker table, grab the power tool, click the railgun, install, crank the voltage. We want to max the damage this thing will do, and crank or add an elite battery using the HV capacitor. If you don't want to make one, you're going to have to make an HV capacitor anyway. If you don't want to do one of those, you could probably do the basic battery. Um, the recipe is a little bit easier for the LV capacitor. Um, doesn't really matter, up to you, because we'll recharge it anyway. So we're not going to be carrying this thing around, so we don't care that it's 10 uh, kg each. Um, doesn't matter to us, so we'll just crank the battery size to hold 5 million joules. So now that we have this, we have to actually get this thing set up in a rig that can kill mobs. To use the railgun, you're going to have to actually go into the power tool if you just scroll over to it in your uh, little hot by down there and if you hit shift it'll bring up the menu that lets you scroll between the tools now since we only have the railgun there's only one and you can see it down at the bottom so what we have to do is this is just a deployer and you can make a deployer with a chest a piston some cobblestone and some redstone and we're going to put the power tool in the deployer and deployers basically they use the left click or the right click just like a human would whenever they're given a red zone signal so if I take and pulse this you can see the front opens up and in theory the thing inside of it has just been used um, the only problem is okay so we look 747 K out of 5 million and if we pulse it again we should see 744 K so it uses 2k per shot so it is being used there's just nothing in front of it I think I can hit myself but I'm on uh, creative mode, so it won't actually hurt me. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're going to put it into the wall of this base. Now I'll get into what's in this base in just a minute, 
But let me explain how we're setting this thing up. What this is, is here's our deployer, and here's a timer. And basically the timer is just hitting the deployer. The deployer has a railgun in it. Um, you can see that it's pulsing and killing whatever's in front of here. We'll get into how to get stuff in there in just a second. Um, then the way that we keep this thing recharged is through Power Converters mod. And this is just a universal charger placed right next to an energy bridge placed right next to an IC2 consumer. Now I have an HV consumer which consumes uh, HV power as it might suggest and you can do anything you want here. Um, it's just faster obviously if you use HV power and these are just HV solar arrays pumping into the system and if we see here the every once in a while it'll pulse it'll pull HV power in and send it out through this universal charger. Now the universal charger is awesome it will actually take if you have anything that needs to be charged and you stand on top of it, it'll charge everything in your inventory. And if I take this uncharged railgun here and we were to stand on top and look, we can see how down there the energy is actually increasing because it's charging because I'm on top of the universal charger. Also, we can put the railgun, I'm actually, yeah, anything that stands next to it too. I'm in proximity, so I'm still getting charged. So if we put it in the deployer, and then we look back at the energy bridge, we can see it's taking six and a, or 6 .1 thousand EU per tick and charging this thing. It's pretty awesome, it's, it's pretty fast, and we're going to use that to keep the railgun charged at all times. So now we need something to actually kill. Now there's two ways to do this, to spawn mobs. Remember, they have to be hostile mobs, so you can't use um, the automated animal farm to create cows or something like that and then kill the cows. They only drop from hostile mobs. So, mob spawners. It is possible to use these without cheating. And the reason for that, there's two reasons actually. One is that mob spawners, uh, I believe there's zombie, spider, and skeleton mob spawners that spawn naturally in the world. So all you have to do is find them. Now, you can't destroy these things. You can't pick them up. Um, anything you do will actually destroy them. You can't pick them up once they've been spawned in. So, how do we move them? You don't need to pick something up to still use it. The way that we do that is with these things that are uh, support frames. And we use a frame motor to move support frames. Now, support frames, this is a kind of a quick primer. Uh, these things are extremely sticky. And anything that touches them, they will stick to. So if there's a block of dirt on one of these sides, it will try and pull the block of dirt. These things are very finicky. You're probably going to want to clear a nice 3 by 3 hole whenever you find one of these in the world. Um, we found a bunch of them in our world and marked down all the locations. Basically, just drill down until you get get there. Slap one of these support frames on the top. And I put a wrath lamp here. You can put really any lamp. Um, otherwise, this thing will keep spawning as you're trying to move it, and you constantly have to fight things off. Then this is just Blutricity. Again, to our um, frame motor, you can rotate this thing with a screwdriver. And if you can kind of see there, there's an up arrow behind um, up arrow right there and that's what we want to do so if I pulse this thing you can see that it's going to move the frames and along with it comes our mob spawner so we can take that and we're going to move a bunch of mob spawners into the inside of our mob farm the other way of making a ton of mobs to spawn and kill is actually much simpler but requires um, the automatic animal farm the automatic slaughterhouse uh, check our videos. I'll post a link at the end of this video for how to set that up because it needs this stuff called Mob Essence. Now, this is an Ender Tank. These are new in Tech at Light 061. They're awesome. They can be color coded just like everything else. And this is just a Liquiduct. And finally, we have the Mine Factory Reloaded Auto Spawner. And I just slapped a Redstone Energy Cell right behind it. Um, you don't need to do that. You just need to hook this up to power. Um, in the same ways, if you watch the animal farms, it's the exact same setup. Basically, it just needs um, Billcraft power. So, if we take this auto spawner and we look inside, it needs something called a safari net to have captured in it a mob. Now, safari nets are kind of expensive. If we look at the recipe, it's four ender pearls surrounding a ghast tier, which means you have to actually go into the nether and get and kill a ghast and grab his tier. The great thing is that these are now no longer... Um, consumed on use so basically once you make one you can keep using it now to capture stuff I have creative mode on obviously so actually you know what the sad thing is they break in creative mode so I'm gonna kinda almost die here you just grab it and slap one really quick let's fend all these guys off with a railgun boom boom again the insane range of this railgun 
Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. And once we have the zombie or skeleton uh, trapped in the safari net, we just basically put it in the auto spawner just like that. And you can say spawn exact copy, yes or no. If you say no, it uses a lot less power, um, which is what we want. And it needs this stuff, though, in order to create these called monster essence. Now, monster essence has actually been loaded into this ender tank. You're going to need to build the animal farm to produce this stuff reliably. Go check that out and then take that exact design and hook it up maybe to an ender chest or just straight liquiduct right into this or ender tank sorry and then um, you can also just do a straight liquiduct right into the auto spawner now if I turn this thing on you can see that it will basically once the cooldown goes see how it's idle for oh it actually tells us how long it's idle for which is kinda cool how many ticks As soon as it hits the idle it's gonna start spawning these guys everywhere which is awesome it's exactly what we want so now just a really important and quick note about how uh, the different spawning types work. The auto spawner will work as long as the chunk is loaded, which is critical if you're going to have a base that runs when you're not there. Whereas the mob spawner, you can see the flames disappear a little bit. It needs to be, you need to be within 16 blocks of the mob spawner. Otherwise it will not spawn any mobs. Oh my word, what have I done? <laughs> Okay, so while all those uh, zombies I accidentally let the auto spawner spawn in die a horrible and gruesome death, let's check out the real way that they're going to die a horrible and gruesome death going forward. Now before we dive into this box, let's explain what it's doing. Now this box is basically a box in which um, no light can enter and importantly, just as importantly, outside there can be only light. And the idea is that if we turn it to midnight we can see there's a 17 or 18 block radius around a mob spawner in which the mob spawner will actually try and spawn mobs. Now it can only spawn mobs where the appropriate light level exists so by putting, I just have wrath lamps, but by putting any sort of lamp outside we make it too light for the mob spawner to be able to spawn a mob. Now the only place that's left is actually inside this box in which no light exists. So Inside this box are a bunch of mob spawners, which we've already showed, or you can do the auto spawner, which we've already showed. But how do we get them into the range of our railgun? And to do that, we're going to use this thing that I have in my hand, and it's called a conveyor belt. Conveyor belts are actually extremely easy to make. Just three rubber, a redstone on either side of an iron ingot, and you get 16 conveyor belts. And these things are awesome because what they do is they're easy to place, and the direction that you aim while placing them is the direction that the conveyor belt will push. And what we're going to do is, if we see, let's take a little basalt paver here. If we throw it on there, we can see how anything that lands on the conveyor belt will get pushed along its direction. And that includes players, and importantly for us right now, it also includes any mobs that spawn. So inside our lightproof, airproof, airtight, whatever dome or building here, we have all of our mob spawners surrounded and just in the walls. Um, you can also use the auto spawner. I just originally built it with mob spawners. And on top of them I have conveyor belts in case anything spawns on top it will get pushed off. And onto this floor is a treacherous array of conveyor belts. And basically all these do is if you see this guy here, he spawned way over there and the conveyor belts push them down this hole. Now down the hole, if you can see the machine there, is actually our deployer and railgun setup. And then below that is another conveyor belt setup that's going to take and ferry the items out. You can see we left a little bit of a space there. Um, anything that dies, you can see anything that dies and drops inventory is going to fall along that conveyor belt and we're going to pick it up on the other side. So if we take a look at this other side here, we can actually see all the items come funneling down from the mobs that we're killing and the railgun sniping them all and it's doing it in such a manner that the game thinks that we are actually doing the killing. And you can see that. Look at all that experience there. If you stand close enough, and I think I'd have to break this so that the experience can get through, um, there's a ton of experience. You can see my level is just churning there. And that's going to take, I mean, if you want AFK and something like this, you come back and be 20 or 30 levels higher um, in no time at all. So any of the items that come along here from the guys that we killed are going to actually get picked up by this thing. There's a medium stone. Woohoo! Medium shard. 
uh, they're going to get picked up by this thing called the item collector and that is also from the mine factory reloaded mod now the reason I'm using that is because I want to be able to automatically dump everything into this ender chest and this ender chest is just default coded white 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 remember there are somewhere over 4,000 different color combinations using the 16 different dyes um, don't quote me on that math I haven't actually done it I just kinda guessed um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this ender chest in the final setup which is actually gonna build the minium stones themselves mm -hmm. 